Good morning, folks. We've got a lot of things to discuss today and in some detail, too. We'll look at weather and an earthquake watch as well, but let's get started, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star with the northern coronal hole turning into center disk, plasma filaments ahead of it and behind to the south incoming. No sunspots or solar flares, but the solar wind continued to intensify as the coronal hole stream swept past our planet and continues this morning. It was only a minor event in the magnetosphere, but the brand new German electron density layers tracker showed its first solid effect. Two bright panels on the equatorial electrojet just before the KP4 settles in, and just a few hours later, we've had brightening or increase in electron density in four layers, with a third stripe added at the 250 kilometer altitude. During future big events, this will be dynamite. We'll obviously have another coronal hole stream on the way here today, expected to arrive at Earth Friday night. Until then, we're 25 days since the last magnitude 6 quake, and we expect three per week. With electron energy, however, the Venus conjunction and coronal holes facing Earth, we do have a period of increased seismic risk for about 48 hours. And speaking of Venus, she is hiding right now behind the SOHO blocking disk, but as we'd hoped, her overexposure burn has been calibrated out and we're back to normal. They do have a 100% burn fix rate over the last decade on SOHO. Tremendous collaboration of scientists coming together to forecast the upcoming solar activity of this century. They consider only about a 10% chance of maunder conditions or even lower activity, but they eye the Dalton period as being the more likely similarity, not quite as weak as the maunder period. But they also make a potential omission in analysis, saying that Earth's weakening magnetic field will make any activity less intense from the Sun because we'd have a smaller magnetic field and smaller cross-section to be impacted by the solar wind. Now this is true and for the magnetotail introduction of energy to Earth it makes sense. But we know that the magnetospheric compression on the day side, wholly tied to its strength, and the direct plasma injection into the sheet is another mechanism for solar energy introduction and that one gets intensified as Earth's protective magnetism disappears. We also had an aesthetic release last night. Every known object in the different bands put onto one galactic view image with density color gradient. This is everything we know about in the cosmos, or at least that we can see, with the galaxy itself dominating the density profile, obviously. Interesting article in The Guardian about how this was the most expensive climate event year on record between the hurricanes, floods, droughts, etc. And speaking of climate, what we've got here is January through December 2017, cycling through a couple times. You are looking for the mixture of hot and cold every month, some months more than others, but the purpose is to show you that nice balance throughout the year and yet somehow when the government experts peek in on the full year of data, any sense of equilibrium disappears and you'd never think we had a single month below average in almost any region. Nice, guys. Weather event of the last day was the heat wave in Australia that ended up killing thousands of flying foxes despite rescue efforts. Today we'll be watching that California storm system head on shore. We discussed it coming three days ago and now it's tightening its grip. Folks, if you missed our conference preview yesterday, we've got sneak peeks of slides from seven of the presentations. One week left to get your hotel room discount as well. See you out in the desert. We've got the world on wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 525 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.